So first, I'm going to go into aldehydes and ketones. So as you may know, aldehydes, they only have one alkyl group and one hydrogen bond attached to um, the carbonyl. Um, they are always a ter terminal group, so they're always at the end of the molecule. And uh, when naming them, they have the suffix AL at the end when it's the highest priority functional group in the molecule. So on the bottom right, I just have the general structure of an aldehyde. So as you can see, it has a central carbon that is uh, that has a carbonyl, so it's double bonded to an oxygen and then attached to an R group, which is usually an alkyl chain, and then finally a hydrogen as well. And then um, on the picture below, you can see there's just five um, general aldehydes that you'll commonly see on the MCAT. Some of them have um, more specific names. So methanol can, they also refer to it as formaldehyde, ethanol as acetaldehyde, propanol as propionaldehyde, butanol as butyraldehyde, and pentanol as valdaraldehyde. So usually the first four are the ones that they mostly use but um, just be aware that uh, they can have two different names to them. And uh, it's helpful to know what the, the group looks like. So in the, the how they're connected and what um, the, the, the alkyl group is. So that's um, aldehyde and then ketones. They're similar to aldehydes, except they have two alkyl groups bonded to them instead of um, just one like in aldehydes. Uh, so since they have two alkyl groups bonded to them, they're never a terminal group. You'll always find them at the center of a molecule. And um, when it's the highest priority functional group, you'll see the suffix own at the end in the IUPAC name. So ketones, they look similar, but um, instead of hydrogen also bonded to the carbonyl and the other alkyl group, it's uh, an, usually another alkyl group bonded to it. And so for um, aldehydes and ketones, you'll usually see the prefix oxo um, when it's not the highest priority functional group. Um, so when there's like a carboxylic acid also on the group, when it's not the highest, uh, highest priority functional group, you'll see it um, referred to as oxo in the IEPAC name. And then they also use the, the prefix keto for ketones. Um, so for when they're named as substituents, you'll see aldehydes and ketones referred to as oxo. And then also for ketones, they use keto as well. So that's just aldehydes and ketones. Um, so you can form an aldehyde by um, partial oxidation of a primary alcohol by PCC. So PCC is a mild um, oxidizing agent, so it won't oxidize the primary alcohol into carboxylic acids. It'll stop halfway. It'll oxidize it to um, an aldehyde instead. And uh, for ketones, um, any secondary uh, secondary alcohol, uh, they'll any um, oxidizing agent will oxidize the secondary alcohol into a ketone. So um, PCC will oxidize the secondary alcohol into a ketone, but then anything stronger like um, Na2Cr207 um, or potassium dichromate or um, the Jones oxidation will turn the secondary alcohol into a ketone. So those are some reactions on how to form um, the aldehydes and ketones. So just some physical properties on aldehydes and ketones, their uh, properties are governed by the presence of the carbonyl. So the carbonyl determines um, the, the bonding and other interactions of aldehydes and ketones. So they, um, the, case, the carbonyl is polar um, and the molecule is polar, but there is no hydrogen bonding because there's no hydrogen attached to the oxygen in the carbonyl. So because there's no hydrogen, um, there's no hydrogen bonding between aldehydes and ketones or um, aldehydes and ketones with any other molecule. But the carbonyl, um, it, it acts as an electrophile due to the electron withdrawing properties. 
of the oxygen attached to the carbonyl. So because the, the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, it'll pull more of the electron density to the oxygen as a result. And this causes a partial negative charge on the oxygen and then a partial positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. And this, um, this causes the carbonyl carbon to act as an electrophile and uh, interact with nucleophiles that are able to donate electron density. So at the bottom, you can see here, because um, of the electronegativity of the carbon, uh, the oxygen, uh, more of the electron density is drawn towards the, the oxygen. And that results in a po uh, partial positive charge on the carbon and partial negative charge on the, the oxygen. And when reacting, aldehydes are more reactive than ketones just because there's less steric hindrance and uh, less electron donating alkyl electron donating alkyls. So because of the extra alkyl group in uh, ketones, there's more steric hindrance and alkyl groups are um, are weakly electron donating, so that causes it to be less um, effective as an electrophile. On the right, how many ketone groups are in the following molecule? And there were some mixed responses, but the answer is A. So in this molecule, there's a few um, amide groups, a few esters. Um, they're all trying to confuse you. So there's only one, um, one true ketone group, and this it's this one right here. So ketones, it um, consists of a carbonyl, and then two alkyl groups attached to it. So this is the only group that has two carbons attached to it. All the other ones like this one um, is technically an ester. This one's an amide. Um, yeah, so that this group right here is, um, this is the only true ketone group in this molecule. 